Hello and welcome to the Tech in the Hood podcast. I'm your host, Ahmed Flex Omar. Tech in the Hood is a storytelling podcast that explores the past, present, and future of Chicago's cultural identity through conversations about community and technology. Each week, I reconnect with the friends and mentors who have shared this journey and spotlight new voices and innovators building the future of the Tech in the Hood. Welcome back to Tech in the Hood, the show that brings you all things art, business, culture, and technology. Today with me is my dear friend, Kevin Davenport, and Kevin is the author of The Ideal Candidate. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man, it's good seeing you. It's been a while. It has been. It has <laughs> been. I'm excited to be here. Thank you again. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we got to tell the listeners, how do we know each other? I always like to start with that. The throwback. Uh, yes, yeah, so we met yeah. a Chicago Leadership Alliance. How, yeah. Is that eight years at this point? Nine wow. years? Yeah. How wow, long has it been? That's uh, it's it's amazing how uh, time flies. Yeah, I believe it was uh, 2015. Yeah, that was, that yeah, was some, the time. Some time ago. Yeah, Chicago Leadership Alliance brought us together and a lot of, a lot of other cool people. So yeah, no, grateful abs- for that. Abs- uh, absolutely. And we'll dig in a little bit uh, later into that. Uh, where were you at at that time in 2015 when we first met? Uh, I was just getting started with Ideal Candidate. That was our very first year in business. So that was kind of my way of getting around the city a little bit was through CLA. So uh, it's coming full circle now that we're here today in the book. You know, that wasn't even a thought. So, uh, yeah. (laughs) Wow. That's that's incredible. So for somebody who has no idea about the Ideal Candidate, can you uh, just tell them a little bit about the... Book and the journey and the journey and the journey. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, my name is Kevin Davenport, founder of the Ideal Candidate. We are a workforce development agency focused on community impact. Mm -hmm. And you know, we we um, like I said, we got started really, believe it or not, through my mom on the south side of Chicago at a performing arts academy. I've been teaching this curriculum since I was twelve years old. Uh, Phil Crest School of Performing Arts. So anyone listening, you know, she's still open. (laughs) Shout out to my mom. She's been in business for forty six years. God bless her. Uh, thank you. Uh, so feelcrestperarts.com. But yeah, that was how I got started. You know, she was making an impact through performing arts. And she's like, I would love to make an impact with soft skill development. And I have my son teach it at 12. Oh, wow. And as he's an adult, he'll learn how to apply it. And so uh, fast forward, he, here I am, you know, I'm, I'm carrying on my mom's legacy. I saw the vision that she had. And, you know, I formalized the concept. And um yeah, you know, actually to fast forward, you know, we got started as a nonprofit in 2015, but we are officially a for-profit and nonprofit now. So okay. I know we're going to talk a little bit about that too and some of that entrepreneurship journey, but uh, the for-profit side houses our diversity staffing agency mm-hmm. and training and uh, our nonprofit side gives away all of the resources to black and Latino communities. So that's, yeah, that's that's who we are, what we do in a nutshell. That's yeah, incredible. Chicago native. Chicago, South Suburbs, South, South Suburbs, suburbs. Matson, born and raised. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's awesome. Cubs or Sox? Cubs, yeah, Cubs. Yeah, um, yeah. I got that. I'm a third generation. My grandfather, <laughs> um, you know, doctorate or so, so I'm definitely yeah. a Cubby. That's that's awesome. Well, how about you? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to have to make sure. I got got the 42 with the Jackie (laughs) Robinson. Love it. Special edition Cubs hat. Yeah. But um, it's funny, you know, how I became a Cubs fan. I um, I wasn't even living in the United States. I was in Abu Dhabi. I knew nothing about baseball. But uh, CNN International always uh, did a little coverage on American sports. And part of it was, uh, I think it was McGuire and Sosa. They're going for that home run, you know, rec- record. I've always had f- family in Chicago, so I was like, of course, I'm supporting the, you know, Cubs. When I came to the States in 2000, that's when I started learning a little bit about baseball. I'm like, man, this is, sports does not make any sense, you know, oh, to me. Wow. And then once I figure out that it's number stats and all these things, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I can, I think I can slowly you know understand that then i started playing video games you know around around that and that's how that's how i learned about you know base baseball but now i use uh 
baseball metaphors in you know uh, in, 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 in business, in business you know? so, yeah. yeah so 23 years later I'm a hardcore uh, cubby well you're on the right side yeah. you're on the right side yeah my, my whole family I've always been a cubby I've had yeah. you know my pops you know me and grow up watching it together so uh, you're on the right side Absolutely. for sure. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> catch a game in old Wrigley. One hundred percent. You know, I actually did that for Father's Day this year. I'm a new oh, father, you? as you know. But oh, yeah, that was right, uh, my Father's Day treat. We went to the Cubs game. My wife, my son. So. Uh, definitely a diehard Cubs fan Man. for sure. Congrats, <laughs> congratulations! And you got a two-year-old. I got a two-year-old. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's How's right. father treating you? Um, it's it's a it's a be- you know that's a loaded question by the yeah. way. Right? Yeah. You know that's <laughs> <laughs> if you want it real, but yeah. no, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's definitely challenging, uh, but it's beautiful. I've always wanted a family, and mm. uh, I'll go ahead and say it live now. We're actually expecting. So oh, wow. uh, yeah, breaking um, news. You know, we're, we definitely want a bigger family for a live. Uh. Of course, of course. So yeah, we're um, you know always one of the family so it's a beautiful thing man yeah. um grateful for him too and grateful seeing him grow up every day that's that's, that's <laughs> awesome man that's really that's really inc- uh, inc- incredible no so are you doing the uh, ideal candidate uh full-time right now I am not actually. Okay. I still consult. Mm-hmm. I do entrepreneurship, and I'm uh, actually one of my biggest uh, clients is Chicago Urban League. I'm the yeah. director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation there. Oh, that's incredible! Uh, so. I'm doing that, and again, I do have a few other clients that I'm servicing. Sure. You know, I teach stocks and all that good stuff on the side too. I'm one of the these uh, yeah. c- course persons, but uh, yeah. on you know my main, I guess, focus is the ideal candidate. That is where. I uh, see myself focusing, but you know, I do have some other endeavors and I'm also an angel Cere- investor. So Cereal and yeah. Entre- and an yeah. investor. So try, try to make my rounds, hey, but, um, doing it, all, doing it all, brother. Trying, yeah, trying. We might, we might have to bring you in <laughs> for a couple more episodes to break all of that down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a vision flex. I know I'm yeah. running like crazy now, but, uh, we got to check in in five to 10 years and I'll be a little <laughs> more calm and a, a little bit better. We'll have some other staff working, but yeah, the whole point is to elevate my community, but mm-hmm. I have to kind of do the legwork in the front end. So it's all part of the plan. It's all oh, part abs- of the plan. Abs- abs- <laughs> abs- absolutely. And tell me about the uh, Urban League. How long have you been? Chicago yeah, Urban it'll almost be five years. So it's four and a half mm-hmm. years. I started as program manager there. Okay. Um, I always ran the two programs, but I run uh, Next uh, Deal, which is focused on getting government uh, contracts. So mm-hmm. we help businesses get their minority business enterprise uh, certification, women's business certification, uh, all, the, all the BEs, right? DBE. Right, 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 right. Um, and then, you know, bid on those contracts. And then I also run a program called Next Level Exchange. Mm-hmm. It's a one year mentorship program but that one's really cool uh, in the sense that it's Chicago Urban League, Women's Business Development Center, and Sunshine Enterprises. So three major impact organizations uh, on the south and west side of Chicago all working together, uh, working with the best entrepreneurs and finding the best uh, mentors, and then uh, matching them with those mentors that are industry-focused, that have typically sold their company. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so that direct mentorship, mm-hmm. uh, usually we're seeing three, four X growth in that mentee's business uh, from completing that that uh, cohort. So really proud of that program too. Uh, like I said, that's that's my kind of world. There's helping uh, small businesses grow and scale. Ah, oh, that's awesome, man. You're doing you're doing God's work, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. To, um, again, I, I just wanted to give back and yeah. um, live a life of purpose, and so I feel like I'm on track and just. Grateful to uh, get paid to do what I love and, and you know, make some type of an impact. Yeah, yeah. imagine <laughs> uh, profit and purpose. Bingo. That's yeah. right. No, abs- That's right. Abs- absolutely. So tell me about the demographics, you know, that you serve. So uh, with the Urban League versus the ideal candidate. Yeah, really good question. So, you know, as far as the Urban League, mm-hmm. uh, you know, first off, there's a national presence, right? right so there's, right, a, there's right. a national Urban League and you've got other, um, you know, Locations at major metropolitan cities, Chicago just happens to be one of the the largest ones, but uh, we have uh, really services to support all walks of life. So, of course, entrepreneurship, but we have housing, uh, youth development, workforce development. So really, you know, any African-American in the southwest side of Chicago that needs some type of support in any walk of life, you can step foot in our doors and we'll help you uh, mm-hmm. or connect you to a resource uh, that we're connected to. Yes, sir. And um you know, as far as the ideal candidate, we're really focused on that 18 mm. to about 30 age group okay. um, and heavily focused, I would say, on that entry level candidate 
that is looking for their first or second uh, job, especially with a major corporate partner. That's that's where we step mm-hmm. in. Um, and so we work with a lot of colleges, restorative justice, uh, returning citizens yeah. um, and veterans. And so, you know, uh, really where we come into play too, you know, and for employers, it's incredibly hard for them to source for soft skills and especially still while they source for hard skills. And so mm-hmm. we kind of help to mitigate those risks for the employer side and we help bridge those gaps with the introductions on the you know impact side and so that's where we see fit we find the candidate we help train them with our unique soft skill training and self-sufficiency training cohort and then we get them placed and we're really like the uh, nonprofit really comes in especially is in addition to providing these skills for free for the candidate we also have again those self-sufficiency financial literacy so the main goal is you know once we get this candidate to check do they understand what to do with that finance can they break generational curses in a sense where they know how to invest trim expenses save mm-hmm. uh you know because if we're just getting them a check and uh, you know, they're asking for money the next week. It's like, what, what are we doing? So we understood that had to be yeah. a part of the curriculum. It, it's I'm laughing. That actually was a true story. That was my second candidate ever. Two weeks later, we got the student a job. And he's like, Mr. Davenport, can I borrow some lunch money? I'm like, what, the, what, what, you know, what happened to your job and, you know, spending it on food and mm-hmm. Jordans and jeans. And I'm like, okay, well yeah, yeah. that officially pushed us to create the financial literacy model. So, mm. um, you know, again, everything that we do is for impact yeah. and yeah, ho- hopefully that gives a little more insight into the, the well-roundedness of the program. Yes, yeah. I wish I was your <laughs> student when I was, uh, at college at Loyola. So being an, um, Im- immigrant, um, I didn't have knowledge about how capitalism worked and going to first day of school all you see is uh credit card companies and banks and and and, and so on so you can easily get into into uh trouble you know so yes. it took me some a uh, couple of years to pay off you know some certain uh credit uh, credit cards you know just really knowing how the system you know even works and that's why i uh, switched majors from computer science to accounting Wow! See, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was wow. already, I was already uh, self-taught in IT, but then I was also trying to major in it, and I was working on the west side of Chicago at the time. But I said I also want to do business, but I don't understand how business, you know, works uh, here. So let me wow. go and uh, study uh, accounting. Went and uh, graduated from Loyola with an accounting degree. When I was graduating, I didn't even know that I needed an internship. So I just found out from friends that were graduating that had all these internships. And, yeah. you know, some even had three because they start <laughs> sophomore, junior, you know, senior mm-hmm. year. Like a lot of our candidates, right? You know right. what I'm, you know what I'm, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate all that, you know, you're, you're doing. And for me, I got lucky because of networking with, uh, or I could say I created my own luck. I spoke to friends that were just leaving their internships and I got an interview with a gentleman named Mike Green at uh, UBS at Union Bank of uh, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. I was the last person he interviewed, and I literally pitched them on how I can use uh, my IT background um, to help him in his work. And that uh, internship changed uh, my life and uh, doing wealth wealth management. And you know, he was already very successful, had over half a billion dollars in assets under. Uh, man, management. So I was not sitting around doing cold calls or trying to get him mm-hmm. new clients. You know, he would send me on um, lunch meetings with uh, mutual fund uh, sales salespeople, and so I would go to these fancy places. You know, eat these nice lunches as a yeah. col- you know as somebody who's still in uh, <laughs> who's still in college, and will say, "Oh, you're Mike Green's guy. Can you make sure he looks at our blah blah?" blah? And I'll come back and he'll ask me to analyze it yes and so at the time morning star was really um the place you know to go so i used morning star as my uh, cheat code to do the analysis you know for uh uh, uh, for him and he would little look at it and say okay so do you think this is going to be good for our clients and so on so i owe that man a lot you know like the amount of trust you know he uh, put in me. And then after that, I started getting calls left and right from all these accounting firms asking me to, uh, join, you know, so we went, went not being able to find any offers. So just being part of 
a Swiss bank. Exactly. <laughs> and everybody, everybody's, uh, you know, uh, uh, call, uh, calling me. But I wish I had your book at the time. I wish I had, you know, someone like yourself to mentor me, you know, at the time. Yeah. So I really and appreciate everything that you're doing, man. Thank you. And, and thank you for sharing that and being vulnerable. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and be vulnerable. I was vulnerable <laughs> in the book, too. But, yeah. you know, I got myself into credit card trouble, too, mm-hmm. which is part of the reason why, you know, we added this. And let's just even break down everything that you said in context yeah. to how we, you know, even train that. So uh, the networking, we mm-hmm. talked through how to make a good first impression because sure. it is so critical yeah. with that there's dressing for success now you're talking about lunch meetings so we go over table manners so Mm -hmm. people ask like why are table manners part of your curriculum well that is exactly why you cannot go to the next level without being able to sell yourself in any environment not every time is going to be at a business you know setting sometimes we'll be at lunch and dinner or these gala these dinners so uh love that you disclose that and you know we're vulnerable but yeah Mm -hmm. that that ties in directly to how we prep uh the candidate to be prepared for any of those situations Um, and how do the program work sort of their uh, different levels, like beginner, intermediate, or (laughs) how do you... uh break it down without giving away too much of your uh, yeah, secret, no. secret sauce. <laughs> this is great. No, this is great. So uh, we kind of have two approaches, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and the reason being, we have our own internal process. So let's say we we are identifying the candidate. We're going to get them placed. That's one. Or we also work with other ex- well-established nonprofit organizations or colleges, et cetera, that are making an impact, but that could use some of our services. So mm-hmm. uh, let's say, you know, Inglewood Tech Academy, amazing hard skill program. They go through CompTIA A plus training, but that candidate is a little bit more attractive to an employer if they have the soft skill certification to match. The second that we merge those programs, we got 100% hiring rate. Mm-hmm. And so that is like the perfect example. Uh, if you are listening, we can help with any of these steps. But again, if we're going to go through our program, uh, we have the online certification, which we just got the Tech Maker Award for uh, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. mayor. Congrats, so congrats, Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, we have the online curriculum. And really that goes over like the everything, the entire foundation of what we talked about. Next, um, we go through the book. Mm -hmm. So now they're learning self-sufficiency instead of just going over like financial literacy like they would online. The Mm -hmm. book will actually go through what is it like living on my own for the first time and budgeting for toothpaste and toilet paper and groceries because I've never done that. Right. Uh, How does credit actually apply to buying my first car now? So Mm -hmm. all these things are in the book Mm -hmm. and it also has a 30 day gratitude journal. So they're getting themselves in the right mind frame. Um, thinking through why am I upset one morning? Why am I not? Which is a real thing, you know, with the students that I work with. And then we have in-person simulators. So just like we said with the table manners, Mm -hmm. now they get to practice it with actual professionals. So uh, like we just took a group of IIT students to Fifth Third downtown, Goodwill headquarters uh, in Inglewood. And again, got to meet all of those professionals. We do a diversity panel and then we do a mock uh, lunch meeting. So they get direct feedback from the, you know, these direct professionals. And then once they go through that field trip and that simulator, we place them with a internship or direct uh, job. So that's our, you know, process. And so Mm -hmm. if an employer or partner wants to join at any point with that, we can help them fill those gaps with either the training or hiring. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's our services and offerings. That's (laughs) awesome, man. That's awesome. That's seem like you're doing a lot of work already with, uh, the ideal candidate. And I love how you uh, keep uh, adding uh, to the book and the journal uh, part is, uh, you know, important because you're also touching upon uh, mental health. That's right. You know, so absolutely you know, got to do your uh, gratitude and uh, affirmations and you know, all of that, you know, so that's, 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 uh, that's good. Um, and so with a lot of the work, you know, that, that you're doing, I mean, you're uh, filling in a big gap on diversity, equity and uh, in- inclusion, you know, with companies. Do you work with a specific industry or are your clients industry? Are you are you industry agnostic? Yeah, we're industry agnostic. Uh, I would say we are industry. Uh, we're entry focused more mm-hmm. than industry focused. Sure. Uh, so that that really is our sweet spot is that. um you know, your, your support staff, your entry level staff, yeah. um, once you get to about management C-suite that we are not the curriculum or training uh, mm-hmm. for you, we have partners for that. So, um, I'll, I'll give one of my partners here, black tech jobs, shout out Will McNeil. Oh, yeah. uh, so anytime we, you know, we have that, we, we, we utilize people like uh, black tech jobs for, 
uh, that outsource. But yeah, for us, our sweet spot for sure is training and placement for entry level diverse candidates. That's awesome. I'm going to have Will and Khalil on the show. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> that would be an awesome one. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. For, sure, for sure. She still uh, gives me a hard time about putting her on a flyer. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I got I got no comment for that. Yeah, I love them both. It was it was funny because you made you made the intro to Khalila, and um, I uh, already went to and did the flyer, but I didn't send it to anyone but her. And I'm like, so are you interested? And he <laughs> was like, well, I'm already on the flyer, so sure. That's too funny. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, she, so she reminds me every time <laughs> doing anything. So I'm that out, was a few I'm years out, ago too. Flyer. Yeah, at that, the Met, right? At the, the Met the, Club. The, the Met Club. Oh, we got, we gotta, about we gotta that go event. back there, man. Wow. And, you know, yes. Sirius Sir, Sir, Sir Tower. I still call it the Sirius Tower. <laughs> and I, I, got, the I got friends that work for Willis. You know, so. right. That's not what you're talking about, Willis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. I forgot all about that. Wow. Yeah. Time we got, flies. Yeah, we gotta got get everybody together. That was before COVID. That was, that was right before COVID. Black now History it's hitting me. Black wow. History, Black History Month. Yes. It was a yes. Black, Black History Month uh, panel uh, dis- <laughs> discussion, and we had uh, the gentleman Bernie, who's the uh, aviation. Oh yeah, he was a pilot, pilot. and he was an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. and so that that came together really quickly i think we i think we had like a week and a half to put that event together and it came together it was amazing it was really successful Uh, i met betsy there she was ended up being my board chair for a year so that event was wow phenomenal that's what i like to hear (laughs) that's what i like to hear that's awesome talking about you know panels you remember uh the fun conference panel that we did that early morning of course of course holly and chandra that's right that was fun that yeah, was fun yeah. too. And we were like pioneers. We weren't they weren't really do, talking about DEI at that time. It was no. like right before COVID too. And it's yeah. Really upticked uh, after that. Absolutely. Abs- abs- absolutely. You know, so I'm <laughs> sure people are gonna look up some clips now on the on the internet. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you for that. You were the one that, that pulled me onto that panel. So I appreciate it. Thank ah, you. Thank all, you. It's all it's all good, man. I mean you've 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 done the work, you know. I'm trying to get on your level and one day one day be an author, you know. So <laughs> you see how modest flex is. Oh my goodness. But yes, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure, for, for sure. So the other thing too, it's uh, fifty years of uh, hip hop. That's very true. And for people that don't know, that hip hop was founded in the Bronx in the early early seventies. But you, know, you got the whole, everybody talked about it, East Coast, you know, West Coast, you know, but Midwest, you know, we've we've contributed. Actually, I'm going to have uh, my friend uh, Malik Yusuf. Oh, nice! On the on on the show, you know, soon to also, um, you know, talk talk about that. But uh, real quick, who's your favorite hip hop artist? <sighs> I know it's a tough question. It is a tough question. Yeah, if you, um, even, if you even want to go by a decade, it's totally fine. No, nah, I'm, I'm gonna go with someone recent. He's just not, I guess, a U.S. But he's he's a Canadian. But I gotta go with Drake. I gotta oh, go wow. with Drake. Drake's my favorite, okay. for sure. No matter what. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually use a lot of hip. I'm glad you brought that. I use a lot of hip hop to mm. teach a lot of our financial literacy. That's interesting. Too. Uh, so one one bar I can think of off the top, especially from Drake, he's like, um, "Open the mail, staring at the check. It's enough to make you throw up. It's gross what I net." Mm. And I use that to let the kids know mm. what is their gross versus net income. And they're like, oh, I've heard that line before. I didn't know what it means. Wow. Okay. And I use stuff like that all of the time. And so we'll go through and while we're actually, you know, why does your check look a little different than what you thought you would have gotten and what gets taken out of your check and all of that stuff. We use, you know, hip hop to kind of bridge the gap and make it relatable for the kids. Yeah, you're just the <laughs> coolest teacher. <laughs> we're trying. We're trying. A lot of that was due to my, uh, my board of directors. They're amazing. And so we, yeah. we brainstorm on um, what will be most impactful. So here's another thing. I'll be vulnerable too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was born with ADD and dyslexia. So oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, so first, I never saw myself as an author. Anyone watching this like ever, 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 mm. ever. Um, and it actually came from me developing the 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 online curriculum. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy. I actually had the online course in the skeleton plan, all that before I had the book, which is why I was on the fun conference and trying to raise funds. And um, a, a gentleman that I thought was going to be an investor, he ended up being a fraud. So, oh, man. Um, and I quit my job at that point. 
Um, so like long story short, I had like no job, no investor and no app all within like three weeks. And I just remember praying like, what do I do? And, uh, the overarching thing was like, just put it in a book. And I'm just like, like, God, what? I'm, I'm dyslexic. I'm ADD. Like this doesn't make sense. But I literally, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And we used the funds from the book to create the, you know, online curriculum. Mm -hmm. So you just got to keep pushing forward. But, you know, with all of that, while we create the products, it is always with that mindset as, you know, someone like myself, they have a really short attention span and uh, what would make it most relatable for them. And so everything is in sh micro doses, like really short, specific bursts of content that's relatable to the next. And mm -hmm. then we disseminate it a little different. So mm -hmm. even on the online curriculum, it's like me in a classroom and then it's the subject matter experts talking and then they do a workshop and then they do a quiz and then it's back to me in the classroom setting. So it's constantly switching it up and keeping them uh, you know, focused and the in-person simulators are structured the exact same way. No, absolutely. I mean, it's a lot of practice, right? 100%. And it's, 100%. it's just like, uh, again, I use a lot of sports, you know, metaphors, like you gotta come to practice, you know, you can't just show up for, you know, game day. Right. <laughs> and even during game day, you might not, you know, win, win the game, you know, but that's right. you're going to learn something and you're going to pick up adversity and then you're going to go back to practice and you got to build resiliency, right? So one thing, uh, for me is there's that phrase uh practice makes perfect i honestly believe it's a toxic um phrase because there's no such thing there's as no perfect. A perf a perfection right? right so for me i look at uh incremental progress you know so i would change that phrase and say practice equals progress as long as so as long as you know you're progressing you know even by 0.1 percent just be in a state of flow you know so and, and that's uh and for me from a branding standpoint i always tell people hey you know just just flex <laughs> <laughs> i like don't, that don't think about it just 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 flex you know so if you think about it just like the you know gym um, if you've been away from the gym, you know, you get back to the gym, you're just like, oh, man, I don't know, you know what to do. But after a while, everything is muscle memory. Exactly. Right. So just go ahead and, you know, do uh, do the work. And eventually, you know, things that in the past you've seen as obstacles all of a sudden look like opportun opportunities, you know. So mm -hmm. I've always been um, gifted with um, being able to develop relationships with people, you know, build, you know, you know, community. And so anything I've ever done, you know, I've just been bringing people, you know, together. That's why I joined the Chicago Leadership Alliance, you know, where we, you know, met and I developed Mala, the Muslim American Leadership Alliance. And that's why I'm even doing the podcast right now, because um, I started a new company called uh, FlexTech uh, AI. And um, our focus is on applied intelligence you know, most people think that we're an artificial intelligence, you know, company. No, we take all that AI stuff that's been, you know, developed, you know, right now, and then uh, bring in, you know, the human intelligence and the human ingenuity and say, okay, well, how can, you know, you can use uh, these tools to, like, better your workflows? How can you use these, you know, tools mm -hmm. to uh, do lead uh, gen uh, generation? How can these tools, you know, save you, you know, time and, you know, money? I mean, when you talked about, you know, the role playing and some of the work that you're doing in person, you know, with the uh, young people, we have a, we have a bot that um, actually uh, the individual can interact with and ask um, certain, certain questions. And it's a partnership uh, with a uh, French company that's based, you know, in Hong Kong, and it's it's integrated through, you know, a platform that you know we co-developed with another group out of uh, Singapore. But all of these have been relationships. Oh wow! You know, so um, for <laughs> for me, I've all, I always look into uh, doing business, you know, with people. So even even though I've been in tech, you know, for I don't know. Honestly, since I was, you know, 13, I was, but professionally working in tech, I would say uh, 16. It's all been uh, relationships. My first gig actually in Dubai when I was 16 was on a research uh, product. This was, the internet was HTML. Um, you can, the original search engine was Yahoo. Oh, wow. It was brutal. And so the project was focused on 
uh, doing research on an indoor ski uh, resort. And that later, you know, became that uh, ski uh, resort experience in the mall of the Emirates in Dubai. Oh, so when you, wow. when, you, when you go there, but nobody told us, you know, uh, you know, much all, all, all what we're doing was doing the research, putting together, you know, the proposals and, you know, so on. And my father, God bless his soul, you know, he didn't ask too many questions. I'm like, it's summer, I'm going to work. And it was like, all right, I'll drop you off. Yeah. You know, just took, wore, wore his suit and, you know, just, you know, jumped in the next, the next year i worked for a Japanese uh, forex trading uh, company in tele- telemarketing. So I would call people and talk to them about, you know, different investment, you know, uh, uh, packages. And, and my biggest thing was just bringing people into the, you know, office. And then, you know, the salespeople, the other groups would take it from there. And um, at the time, one of my uncles was in investment banking and he worked for Abu Dhabi Investment uh, Authority, he passed away, God bless his uh, soul. But um, he was breaking down you know, to my other family members, hey, what he's doing is really cool. I'm actually shocked that he's even, you know, doing uh, this this type of work. So he was super supportive. You know, he, he bought me a subscription of the Economist uh, nice. mag, ma, um, um, a magazine, and you know, so on. So it was it was really it was a really cool um, ex, ex, experience. So that all of that helped me. You know, when I uh, came, you know, here, um, I was able to pitch myself to a not for profit on the west side health uh on the west side called the west side health authority and and um got employed by them and then helped start a company that's still around till today called uh net net intelligence you know so relationships are everything man absolutely all it's all you know relationships so i know uh right now you're dealing with a different you know generation you know unfortunately a lot a lot of uh those kids um get attacked online because you know it's a different generation so gen z are not good with relationships you know but people always uh try to box you know different generations together but for me like we're not a monolith you know you just gotta everybody's got their individual story and individual you know journey but since we're living in this digital world right um and they're digital you know natives how do you how do you bring them to that point where it's like no eye contact is important handshakes you know matter follow-ups are you know key to long-term relationships yeah you know that's a that's a really good point um a lot of the uh like veterans i work with for example Mm -hmm. they're pretty you know they're really good with the in-person and it's the reverse we got to have their online presence because on corporate both matter now they're both equally as important you can't just come in person and not have a linkedin presence or have a bad linkedin presence even worse than no presence right so um it is equally as important so like you said the the younger uh, you know, groups that we typically work with, they're great with their online presence, but they may not have a LinkedIn, but they're on Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram. And so a lot of that, we have to do some educating on what is your brand online? Uh, what are the three words that come to mind or you think comes to mind when someone visits your page? Mm-hmm. And is it the, the same three words that you would like for, you know, it to be when people visit your page? Uh, what do you think your employer is seeing as they go and visit your page? And again, are you uh, using it to the right way? And so how we tr- teach it is to use it as a tool. And so it should match who you are in person. So um, again, l- eye contact, posture, sitting up straight. It should feel the exact same way when I meet you as I feel when I see your headshot and look at your you know, online resume. They both have to match. If they do not um, equate, you know, it's usually going to have a negative result. Mm -hmm. Uh, And to go even further, like I said, we talked through that making the right first impression, making a good impression in the interview. So some some key things, especially in the entry level, anyone listening, you have about 90 seconds to make a good impression as an entry level interviewee, Mm -hmm. even though the average interview is going to last 40 minutes. You have about 90 seconds. Reason being is most employers are looking to um, hire talent and train skill. And so, um, you know, they're looking for people that fit the company culture. So it's really about how you dress, act and walk through the door. Uh, are you pronouncing and articulating your words the right way? Check. 
Exactly. Uh, and if you don't pass that vibe check, it, you know, it could be problems. And mm-hmm. so, again, that vibe check is in person and online nowadays. And if mm-hmm. you do not pass, you know, you're, you're not going to have the best result. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it's 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 so true. You know, what's funny is um, every time I walked into an interview, I would always ask the uh, person who's interviewing me if uh, where they went to school. Mm. Is yeah, that, because um, if they went to a Jesuit school, then conversation shifts. Absolutely. You know? So by the, time, by the time they got it into their HR questions, what about your strengths and your weaknesses and so on? Then you know that time would have been passed, and we're like, oh, this guy's a, this guy's a good friend. You know, it, exactly. it, doesn't, it doesn't become an interview per se; it becomes more of a conversation so i've been able you know to use that as a as a tool as one of my tools in my uh to a toolbox and you know what's interesting with um, mala when we were doing the storytelling we had recruiters reach out to us and say oh we loved so-and-so's sto- story you know because people were being vulnerable you know yeah. and we want to reach out to this person and i'm like i'm sorry i can't give out you know people's uh emails mm-hmm. and so on i mean you can look them up you know they're probably a linkedin or something yeah. or somebody else reached out to me and said hey you know i had this great interview and the minute i walked in you know all the folks read my story on online so i was not a stranger uh, to them, they knew about my adversities. They knew what I've experienced. You know, so it was a welcome environment. When I first started getting into storytelling, people are like, "I don't have a story. I don't know what I share my what, what, what story do I have to go 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 interview somebody, you know, uh, uh, famous, you know." But if more people started, you know, looking into uh, storytelling, you know, as as a tool to build your personal brand, you can get a lot further in life. Because everything we do is we're selling to each other. You're selling, you're, you're, you're selling, you know, to another, you know, human. I agree. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, so uh, mm-hmm. that being said earlier, you mentioned uh, the board. Yes. Right. So uh, it's something that a lot of uh, founders don't do is you know, build a board. Why is that important? Well, well, for one, you know, we're 501c3, so we had to have a board legally, mm-hmm. um, And um, even with this for-profit, you know, now, especially how we have the both, we still have an advisory board for the for-profit as well. And so Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to understand what you, you know, do or don't need. And really, uh, what's the direction of your company? Where are you trying to go? And so, of course, you know, if you need a 501c3, anyone listening to this that has it or thinking about starting their own, you want to utilize your board that have different and and or better strengths than you have right and so um i am not good at writing grants i don't have the best you know maybe even corporate relationships especially in the beginning my board helped with a lot of that development introductions uh you know again grant development uh programmatic can't how do we make these workshops better how do we make the online curriculum better that's what you use these subject matter experts for and so um you know Again, if you don't have this, you know, nonprofit and you just have this for profit, still utilize this an advisory board. I 100 percent say you do not have to give them any control over your company. But again, you're giving them insight into your company and the company processes. And that could be invaluable feedback, either because of the industry that they're in or whatever that subject matter expertise you know, is. But uh, that is for sure been my secret sauce is understanding how to use the people around me and um yeah, like, again, giving them actionable steps. This is what I need. This is the time frame I need it in. Can someone on this board help or someone yeah. on the team that I'm reaching out to help? And I get those back calls all the time, too. Hey, and if there's an introduction I can get for that person, you know, they're, they're getting that uh, referral, too. So that that's really how I like to kind of live my relationships yeah. is like one hand washes the other. And we're all looking out for each other and. Yeah. That's how structure so works. You heard it. If you're looking into starting a 501c3 legally, you need a board. Definitely need you know, a board. Di- di- uh, directors, <laughs> and uh, that's a voluntary yes. you know, work. So people are committing you know, time. So you have to have a good relationship with that, you know, folks. Um, mm-hmm. So you got to build those, build those relationships. And I, when I started my non-for-profit, I was able to tap into the CLA people. 
And mm. so uh, what I did was, um, and I've been doing work with non-for-profits and consulting for different non-for-profits or on different areas and fundraising and so on. But uh, one thing I always saw is the bigger the board, the more, <sighs> more, the more problems, the more problems, yeah. the <laughs> more right ego, you know, oh, decision, yeah. decision making, you know, it's wild. Takes, takes, takes forever, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, matter. So everything that we did was focused on uh, using uh, human-centered design thinking. And basically what we did was we kept the board small. We just kept it the minimum legal level. It was just like five people. Mm -hmm. And then um, we built an advisory board that was, became over 200 people. <sighs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. That that's a lot. a lot. And we just divided everybody into committees. Uh, committees. Mm -hmm. And so Holly, for example, was the chair for my fintech, you know, uh, committee. So for me, when I was looking at like funding uh, um, opportunities, I was not really focused on just my annual uh, gala. I was um, uh, focused on getting the corporate, you know, money and the annual gala is just to thank everyone that's been mm -hmm. supporting the mission, you know, the entire year. So the annual gala, we used it to raise money for our scholarship uh, fund, but our operations, and all that stuff, it was taken care of through relationships, through the board of advisors. Now, not everybody is going to be um, available to you. You know, mm -hmm. so we'll probably say like 50 were almost like board members. But, you know, those 50 even, you have to value uh, their time. And so um, I had a good friend. Um, his name is Dr. Paul, you know, Dabransky. And he taught me a lot about, you know, human beings and you know, archety archetypes and left brain, you know, right, right brain. So yeah. he knew exactly what to ask each specific person based on their, you know, pers uh, personality. Like, so for someone, you know, like Holly, you know, she's got a uh, magician type of uh, personality. She was great for events, you know, so she helped us really a lot with um, fintech relationships, getting into those, you know, uh, conferences, you know, to talk about, you know, what uh, what we do, that other people that helped us with writing, you know, some some of the early uh, story entries were just essays, you know, so had people that were helping us um, that were journal that, that were journalists, you know, so having the, the board mm -hmm. is important. But what we really utilized was uh, technology. And the platform that was in beta at the time was uh, Slack ah, 2015, yeah. so we were early on. And um, that's how I organized um, every, 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 everyone. And I've nice. been uh, teaching other organizations, you know, how to do volunteer management on, 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 Slack. on, on Slack. Now Slack is on steroids because you get you can make phone calls, you can do yeah. all sorts of things. But what's really cool is Slack had some sort of partnership with IBM uh, Watson at um, as, as, as some point, you know, because there was a, that Slack bot, you could do more things with it. And, you, and it would even help me find um, t tickets if I'm traveling. Oh, wow. Yeah. And help me schedule things and and so on. So it's it's incredible, you know. So you you can build your own bot on Slack. I had no idea. Yeah, I had you know? no so, idea. Um, well, one thing, if you don't mind, if I uh, would love to just like education. I know it's like entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, one thing, if anyone is starting to, you know, a lot of questions I get. Um, let me back up a little bit. One of the mm -hmm. questions I get is like, why do I have a for profit and a non profit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it came from a horror story, right? And it's okay. tied to intellectual property. So I would love to kind of just share my quick like story. Hope someone listening uh, will not <laughs> make ahead. the same mistakes or right, et cetera. And I'll keep it short and sweet, but um, no one owns a non for profit. Okay. It is owned by the, the, Government, the entity, the IRS says like no singular person owns it. It's owned by the public. The board of directors controls the public entity. So you can do all this hard work and grow and scale this massive non-for-profit. And as a founder, you can get fired and there's nothing anyone can do. Right. Mm. The only thing you can really do to protect yourself and this like your last straw is the bylaws and how you have your bylaws written up and then how the bylaws say that the board can vote. You can say a hundred percent board approval for the founder to get fired. If not, it goes to majority vote. So again, if you had this five and three vote you off, then you know, that founder's gone. But if you had five and you need all five, then 
obviously you, if you had one person that was your age then you would be okay as the founder right so very very important who you select as your board of directors because they're not only helping you fulfill this mission but they literally can chop you as the founder so that's one number two right let's say all this stuff can go on I have put a lot of intellectual property into this, right? So there's a lot of time, effort, the online course, the book. So I'm saying this too. While I was developing this online curriculum, we had, um, long story short, someone tried to take the company intellectual property. So everyone tighten up your intellectual property documents have your non-compete agreements ready, have your NDAs ready uh, before you do anything with anyone. It doesn't matter if you, it comes from a trusted source, from someone you know, like it was for me, have your paperwork ready. So that was like my, last year was the most difficult year, but I almost like in hindsight, like I'm like, now I'm like over the hump. It's like, all right, that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I actually came across with way less bumps and scrapes than I could have. Like if I'm 10 years from now, maybe doing, you know, multi-million dollar deals, which now is a lot smaller. It, was, it definitely hurt the couple thousands, you know, hurt, but I'm not, it could have been much larger and I plan to do much more. Right. And so uh, anyone again, listening, understand your laws, with your not-for-profit organization, understand your laws, with your LLC and, and protect yourself with your intellectual property and all the other ways that you can with your paperwork, because even if you're doing this great impact work, there's yeah. still going to be some shady people, even if you're doing this type of work. So no, abs- protect abs- yourself absolutely. and, you know, plan for the future that way. I uh, no, just abs- had to share that. No, no, I appreciate <laughs> you uh, sharing that because um, sometimes we look at certain costs like attorney costs and you know, other costs. It just kills the creativity when you're thinking about um, building a startup. But that's some of the yes. mistakes that uh, startup you know, founders uh, make. But you're not going to learn any of these things unless you make these mistakes, right? Exactly. So, we, so we have to uh, start looking at failure with a different uh, sc- a sc- a scope. Yeah. And so that's just part of the journey. That's just part, uh, part, uh, part of the process. Every startup that I've built, you know, helped me um, improve. And it's just like going back to the sports metaphors, you know, practice progress. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. That's all you could do. But uh, one thing I wanted to ask you is about future of work. You know, so yes. you're preparing um, all these young people, you know, for future jobs. Uh, what trends, you know, are you seeing, you know, right mm. now? Obviously, the pandemic changed some things with the remote work. And yeah, pandemic changed a lot. Um, so, you know, if you get, so I would say if you got a kid college right now, um, first year, second, second year, like how do they strategize? Yeah. So two, yeah, a couple of things. So if you're a kid, answer that question. If you're a kid, uh, you definitely want to get some type of work experience, mm-hmm. paid internship, unpaid internship, even the unpaid internships with the right establishments will look amazing on your uh, resume and make you an extremely attractive candidate as you go into the workforce. So by far, just get, get, doing something. You can volunteer, get a job on campus, uh, but you want to do something. Part two, if you cannot get a job, the best thing you can do is actually just to volunteer, right? Mm. Find a couple of nonprofit organizations uh, that are doing good work. And now you've, one, you've made an impact. Two, you've got something to put on your resume. And three, you've expanded your network. And so if there is going to be an internship opportunity or open position, someone at that, you know, major corporation or, you know, NFP usually is going to know and they're going to keep that person in mind that's already donating back to the mission, right? And so uh, me and people don't know that. That's actually how I got my job at uh, the Urban League. I was part of the Metropolitan Board. So Mm -hmm. I was a fundraising chair for two years, no Mm -hmm. pay, helping raise Mm -hmm. funds and uh, you know, I got hired there about like seven, eight months later from same yeah. entity, but I didn't know that or think about it the two years I was, you know, doing it. So I, I was only, I quit my job cause I thought I had this app. Remember I told that story. Mm-hmm. So literally mm-hmm. like that opened me up to literally, you know, be there and that allowed yeah. me. Yeah. So, uh, volunteer is definitely, you know, best, but to go back to the trends, uh, question for sure, I would say since COVID, employers are a lot more open to contract to hire and staffing than they ever were in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, especially if you make a bad hire, you're on the hook for 30 days. Um, you know, that's fine for one or two employees and you got mm-hmm. the unemployment cost. But for companies that got thousands of employees and that happens to a fourth of your staff, then you may be in trouble because that's hitting your bottom line pretty hard. And now you still got to, you know, find new staff to replace them. Right. And so uh, we can come in and help mitigate a lot of those risks. But that is where the demand has been mm-hmm. is in that contract to hire work. They say, hey, can we work with this candidate for three to six months before we bring them on full time? And can we structure it that way? Uh, and so that that's been a big shift. And I would say number two, just because of uh, the interviewing is mostly all online too now, mm. it has become even more increasingly difficult to source for soft skills. So uh, employers are always looking again for that hard skill, soft skill match. And, it, you know, it's really easy to fo- source for the hard skill. Oh, checks off the box on the resume. But as soon as that candidate comes in for two weeks, it's like, ah, they really weren't the best fit that we thought. Mm-hmm. They're already on the hook, right? So that that's um, the biggest two trends that I can say for sure is um, that we've seen. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I mean, there is no magic, you know, for uh, formula, right? I mean, um, someone can be the perfect candidate on paper, but then the minute they start working, it might not work out. But then that also works the other way too. You know, like the empl- employer has to have the right, you know, company uh, mm. uh, 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 culture, right? We talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. More about belonging. Right? Exactly. So if I walk in there and I, I don't feel like I, 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 I belong, you know, I mean, I'm just uh, sharing some of my experience when I first started working in corporate America. I uh, didn't know anything about uh, Big Ten fo- football. I went to Loyola. You know, football was not a thing. Very nerdy, you know, yeah. s- uh, school. But it was very strategic because I could, uh, you know, work and go to and go to school. It's a city school, right? Um, but in the uh, top companies in Chicago, a lot of the recruitment comes from U of M, Northwestern, you know, in uh, in Indiana. You know, so there was all these you know rituals that you know people you know, had in communities and all sorts of things, you know, so I was just going in to work, doing my job and just leaving. And you were like, no, 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 hold on. You got to do all this stuff. And there's team building, there's this. And, you know, I'm like, oh, interesting. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know, you know, any of that, you know, so I think you bridge, you know, a big, a big gap with, uh, the work that you're doing. So again, I thank you. Um, you know, I'm def- I definitely want, um, you know, people to purchase your book, you know, so can you tell us how, you know, people can get your book? Yeah. Uh, so again, visit our website, theidealcandidate.org. You can definitely get it through there or just Amazon, right? Uh, Google us where we've got the ebook, we've got hardcover and soft cover. Uh, and then again, they all have the 30 day gratitude journal in there and same for the online curriculum. Of course, you know, corporations or uh, colleges, et cetera, can purchase it, but parents purchase it all the time as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, if you are a parent guardian listening to this, this makes a, a great Christmas gift, birthday gift. Um, and yeah, you know, we work with church churches uh, yeah. recently, so we've been getting a lot of just like. Uh, cool opportunity. So if anyone's listening to this, you know, we feel like we can be a good fit. We can definitely come in and uh, talk to your students, pass out the books and, um, you know, make it a whole event. <laughs> I love it, man. I want to thank you for being, you know, on the show and excited, you, for you know, for all the blessings that are coming uh, your way. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I uh, appreciate this again. I am grateful. Uh, you got your book already. So uh, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. And um, yeah, appreciate this uh, exposure here. For sure. And uh, go Cubs. Go Cubs. That's right.